new video on Vue.js and a new way to manage state with Vue.js. I, I might be pronouncing it right, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's called, I'm saying Pinia. I just see the pineapple. Um, I guess this is what's being recommended as a new way to manage state in Vue applications. Uh, I guess this is Vue, Vue X5, I guess is what this is going to be called. I'm not sure, but um, a couple of things that they mentioned right here, which is very, very cool, and I find important is the type safe. It has complete TypeScript support, um, and it's way easier than the stuff I saw earlier on. Uh, and it also has dev tool support. And we'll kind of pop through some of that, but just a quick uh, peek, you can see here, it's got your main store. You can see what's kind of going on in the store. And then when we actually kind of work with things, we'll go through the timeline and you can kind of track what's happening during uh, changes to your state model like you used to be able to do with the old view tools uh, and I think that's kind of it I mean this is not really going to be a deep dive it's just going to take a simple application I created before in react and kind of I didn't even bother changing moving the UI over as you can see this is a simple application we can add students so Andrea and section bottom we can add students and you can see students get added here to the list and also if you notice we can see the mutation which showed the change data that was added we can click back here um, where am i going back up to the inspector we can look at the component we can see the main store we can see the objects in the store as you can see to me like the biggest highlight of all this is the is the tooling um, I modified this so you can actually edit a document and see when you edit it, I change the store. Uh, where is it down here? To keep track of who is the selected student. And then I can modify this bottom. And I update the student. You can see the student is modified. Uh, but I'm also doing some subs uh, subscribing to the store so I can identify changes and update the UI. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. If this is something that you find interesting, please stick around. Let's get to the video. Um, the getting started demo pretty much has it laid out straight for you. Actually, let's see. Let's go to GitHub, see if it's listed there. All right. Interesting. All right, here it is. You do the NPM or yarn based on whatever you do. We're not using Vue 2, but this shows that you can also use it in an older version of Vue with this um, Vue Composition API plugin. And so now let's hop into our code. So we've installed it already. We're in the beginning. We have Vue. We create our app. We pinya, pinya, pinya. I'm going to say pinya. So we do create pinya, we call create pinya, and then we just use it as we would normally as we mount the app. Then the next thing is the app view. There's nothing magical in the app view other than we have the component called student component that I'm utilizing to demonstrate um, how this new store functionality works. So let's hop over to store because that's where the interesting stuff is and see how we define the store. So right here at the top, you can see that I've defined my store. And then in here, like I said, one of the things I really like about this is the ability to create type. So I've created this type or it's interface for my student, name, ID, section, all strings. And then I defined an interface for my store. My store keeps track of all the students. And then it also keeps track of a selected student. So in the UI, you can select the student, which basically indicates you're about to modify or edit it. And then we go in here and we define the store. And my, my store is defined as, as an ID called main store, and then it has students, and then as it, it, uh, it matches the state. So I'm initializing the state variables to get the application started. And then one main thing you'll notice here is that there are there's no um, mutations, which to me just always boggled my mind why I needed to have actions and mutations. So it's just a lot clearer. You just have these actions, and your actions are functions that modify state. And as you can see, you can pass data into them. And then you can also kind of utilize your current state variable. So let's look at let's just look at the basic one for adding a student. So for adding a student, um, and once again, I'm really going heavy with my types here. So I define the type that needs to get passed in. It has to have a name and a section. It gets passed in as a string. We take this student existing student object, 
students, which is an array, an array of students. And then what we do is we take our new object we're about to add. We use our student, uh, we use our student name. Then we generate a unique ID with our math random. We add, do this plus on the end to just kind of turn into a string. And we take the sections, we add that to array, and then we destructure the existing array and push everything that already existed in an array into the new array. So let's take a look at how that works. Let's see if we can get to our app. So here we are in our app. Let's kind of reset everything. So you can see when we start up our state, we have no students, we have no selected student. I'm just gonna put in Aaron K. Saunders. I'll say I'm in the first section, and then I add my student, and you can see my students added. And then we look here on the store, we see the student's been added, but more interestingly, let's kind of look at here at this timeline, go down here to Pinya, and we can kind of see the um, action that happened. So when my action started, we get the information, which are the parameters that got passed in. Oh, the electric space in the front. Um, and then the actual mutation happens, and we have the old value of nothing, the new value is the information I'm being add being added to the store. And then let's see when it's all done, our new value uh, we have set on our main store and add student end. We can look at the we just get the information on the overall event. But then that more interestingly is let's go back to the top level of our view tools and we can look here at our student component. And we can see that our main store state has been updated. It has this additional item in it, and our UI automatically updated to render the item. Um, so I spoke about what happened in the store, but let's talk about how I'm rendering that and making the call inside of my actual student component. So if we go to our student component now, we go up to the stop, and from the store, I pull in my student type, but I also pull in this hook to use main store. I call use main store hook to get access to the store. And as you can see from hovering over it, once again, the type is that access to the type stuff is amazing, but you can see I get my um, update student function, my root student function, my add student function, which is the function that I've called. Um, so let's just scroll down to kind of what's happening. I created a ref which holds my items for the input fields. Also, all the source code will be posted so you can have access to it and kind of step through it. And we'll, we'll talk about what's happening. Well, we have to talk about what's happening now. So what I, I have this selected student. And remember, selected student is only when I'm modifying a student. So when the app first starts, I'm not modifying a student. I'm going to add a new student. So I render these two input fields and my button to add a student. And this is what you see. And then let's just take a look at what this function is. Add a student. Let's scroll back up to my functions. And my add a student function, it takes the name and the section from the ref that I created. It calls the function. It's pretty awesome. You just call it like a normal function, main store add student. I pass in my item value, which is the name and the which is the name and the uh, section. And then when I'm done adding it, I clear out the input field. So that's how we do the add student. Let's do the um, edit student next because that's the only um, real complicated one, and the delete deletes pretty straightforward. So let's look at it from the other side now. Let's look at how we manage it from uh, the component. So if we take a look back at the component, you can see in the component, we have this UI for add student. But if I say I want to edit this, I click on edit. And you can see a couple of things changed in the UI. First, all the values from the original student show up in the field. The UI changes to indicate that we're updating a student. And what we can do is now look at what's going on in the store. So if we click on our store and we go back down here, we can see that we now have a selected student. So we updated that. Um, also, you notice how the UI got filled in when I clicked on Edit Student. And uh, let's look at the let's look at the timeline again and see kind of what happened from a store perspective. So. Uh, what happened here was on this mutation set, it modified um, my key selected student. And what it did was it set this new value to be this ID, which is what we saw when we looked um, 
when we were back at the top level here and we looked at my component, we saw a select student had a value. But one of the things that I did in the code was demonstrate how to use watch or subscribe. And so if we look at what we did with subscribe, let's go back to my student component. And I tried to comment this as best as I could. So you can see I've subscribed to changes on the store. When a selected student is set, we need to put the um, values from the selected student object into the form. So what we're doing is here, we're subscribing. If the key event is selected student, and then here I'm getting the actual event out of its values events. If the event new value is null, meaning I'm clearing it out, then basically clear out the UI. Otherwise, take the new values that I got and set the form to hold those values. And that is why when I clicked on the student, we saw it. Now when I cancel, it clears it out. And if we look again, we can see another mutation happened. And then old value was the fields, a new value was null. So I cleared out the user. Let's go back to the top. See, I cleared out my selected student. And since I'm watching on that, so that I got my key of selected student, the value is null, it cleared out the item values. The item value is a ref. That ref is connected to my UI, so right here. So it's null, so then it shows this section of code again, right? And it's a model connected to the item, and so it clears those values out, and that's why we get the empty screen. So now let's actually modify this. So if I click Edit again, our values have changed, our item set, our selected student is set. Now I can change this. We could say first section, the update student, and selected student is clear. Data is gone. We switched our UI back to add student. If we look at our array, we can see our array object has the correct information in it for first section. So that's showing you how that worked. Let's add one more student that we can delete. Was that Andrea Saunders? Delete section. Let's add the student. Also, you can see we're keeping track of the count as that updates. We see the new student that got added. Well, let's look at the UI one more time to see how that's being done. Once again, since selected store is null, we have this field. We added the user. And now we're going to do delete. Here's a main store length. So I can like look right into my main store and pull values out. So I'm getting the students array and then getting the length and just rendering it. And all this stuff is reactive, so it's updating. And here's where I'm looping through each one and, and uh and kind of rendering the list. But if we look here on this uh, remove on this remove student button for delete, all we're doing is we're calling the method directly on the store to remove student, where it takes an item ID. And then let's look at this store code and look at remove student. Remove student is just doing a simple filter. It's kind of filtering through, finding the IDs that don't that do not match. Well, why did I just say the students to students to students? This might be a little much. I don't think I need this one right here. So it's basically creating it, um, the new array of students because this filter, as you can see, returns an array um, of all the students that don't have the matching ID there before deleting the student. And I forgot I didn't, yeah, I did touch, I did touch on add. I didn't touch on update, kind of what we're doing to store on the update. So we're getting the student data, we're mapping through it, we're finding once we hit the record that matches, we take what existed already, most importantly is the ID, and then we just overwrite everything else. And we return that into the array. If the IDs don't match, we just return the items to the array, and that's how we update the state. I wanted to keep this very simple to give you a basic example, a little bit more complex than the kind of count ones that you normally see, uh, to show you how to utilize this. As I said, um, I kind of commented everything that's happening along the way. Um, you saw the awesomeness of using the tools with it. Um, here is the link to GitHub. And all of this stuff will be posted for you to have access to it. If this is something you found interesting and you'd like to see more, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will chat with you later. Bye now.